Welcome back. By now, you have determined the product features to meet the needs of your customers. In this session, you'll begin to set quality goals for the product features to optimize product design. Your mission is to arrive at an optimum goal for each of those features. In our language, a goal is an aim that target, an achievement toward which effort is expended. A quality goal is an aimed at quality target. We define the optimum goal as that goal which will meet competition, will meet customers' needs, will meet our needs, and will minimize the combined costs. We distinguish between quality standards and quality goals. In our dialect, a quality standard is a mandated model to be followed. The mandate usually comes from an external source. For example, in the United States, the Fair Packaging and Labeling Act, administered by the Federal Trade Commission, mandates that packaged products contain an amount of product at least equal to that claimed on the label. A major feature of mandated quality standards is that they apply equally to all suppliers. The standards may be burdensome, but no supplier is placed at a competitive disadvantage. Generally, these quality standards have been proven. It has been demonstrated that they can be met. Such standards also tend to remain stable for long periods of time. Other quality standards are established by common consent. Examples are the codes published by industry associations relative to product safety, interchangeability, and the like. In the building construction industry, there is extensive standardization. Standard spacing between wall studs, standard dimensions of building materials, standard voltages of electrical circuits. Once established, such standards tend to have the force of mandates. Departure from the standard reduces the marketability of the product. Quality goals, in contrast, are often voluntary or negotiated. That negotiation can result in a competitive advantage or disadvantage for the supplier. Unfortunately, the distinction between goal and standard is not clearly drawn. Confusion sometimes arises from loose application of the words. Sometimes there's genuine overlap of the concepts of goal and standard, such as when a technological goal is imposed but is not yet proven to be attainable. The quality planning process must provide the means for meeting both quality standards and quality goals. In the case of standards, the first need is to identify those which apply to the planning project. In the case of quality goals, the planning process itself is the means for establishing these goals. Each goal or standard, once established, becomes the subject of additional quality planning. The purpose of the additional planning is to establish how the operating forces are to reach the quality goals. If the goals are poorly chosen, the planning resources will be misdirected. We may be doing things right, but we will not be doing the right things. Our experience has evolved a list of criteria to be met by goals a checklist against which proposed goals can be judged for effectiveness. A goal should be measurable. Goals expressed in numbers can be communicated with precision. A goal should be optimal, optimal as to overall results. Goals which suboptimize performance of some specific activity can easily damage overall performance. Goals should be all-inclusive. They should include all the important activities. Activities for which goals have been set tend to have high priority, but at the expense of the remaining activities. If a bank sets a goal for loan volume without including a goal for loan quality, the unwelcome result may be a high volume of low-grade loans. Some criteria are of special importance to those who are faced with meeting the goals. To them, a goal should be legitimate with undoubted official status. A goal should be understandable. 
it should be stated in the language of those who are faced with meeting the goal. A goal should be applicable. It should fit the conditions under which it is to be met. The fact that a goal has been met under laboratory conditions does not prove that it will be met under operating conditions. A goal should be attainable. It should be possible for ordinary people to meet the goal by applying reasonable effort. Finally, a goal should be equitable. Attainability should be reasonably alike for all individuals at the same level of responsibility. Goals most commonly originate from one of four sources, history, engineering study, the market, and mandates. Each source has its merits. Each has its drawbacks. Let's examine these sources more closely. Historical performance is widely used as a basis for quality goals. Manufacturing planners make use of historical data on scrap, rework, and the like for planning the amount of material needed, how much machinery to provide, how many workers, and so on. Planners in the field service department make similar use of historical field failure data for planning the size of the field service force and the inventory of spare parts. A goal based on history has much appeal for the operating forces who will face the problem of meeting that goal. A major reason is that the goal has been met in the past. It has already been attained. Hence, it is attainable. Historically based goals are also a source of stability and predictability since they demand no departure from established practice. The benefits of using history as a basis for goals hide a serious weakness. Goals based on history can perpetuate a poor level of performance. Many companies have lost quality leadership by perpetuating failure-prone product designs, incapable manufacturing processes, or error-prone clerical processes. The quality leadership was taken over by companies which moved aggressively to plan products and processes which improved on historical performance. Engineering study is another basis for setting goals. By engineering study, we mean application of scientific knowledge of the forces of nature and the properties of materials. The resulting quality goals take such forms as material specifications, process descriptions, and dimensional tolerances. Products and processes based on engineering studies have greatly outperformed those which are not scientifically based. Engineering study is used to set quality goals for physical end products such as automobiles or computers, for manufacturing processes such as machine tools or oil refineries, and for data processing systems. Despite the inherent superiority of the scientific approach, Severe problems are often encountered when trying to meet the quality goals established by engineering study. Most of the problems are traceable to the fact that there are two worlds involved, the world of the engineering laboratory and the world of the customers who are impacted by the resulting quality goals. Where there is a strict organizational separation between these two worlds, it is easy to end up with quality goals which are neither applicable nor attainable because the goals were evolved under laboratory conditions, not under operating conditions. For this reason, quality goals derived under laboratory conditions must be carefully reviewed and revised if necessary in order to make them applicable to operating conditions. Another major basis for setting quality goals is the market. Buyers use market price comparisons as inputs to buying decisions. In addition, they look for market information on competitive quality performance. This market information may be available from a variety of sources, from inspection and test of competitors' products, from field performance data on the competitors' products, whether by purchase, test, or even contracting to repair them, or 
from market research among users and potential customers to discover their perceptions and preferences. There are some persuasive reasons for using the market as one of the bases for setting quality goals. In the first place, market quality is a major input to your client's buying decisions and hence a major influence on the saleability of your products. Secondly, since quality is a moving target, the trends in market quality are a major indicator of the rate of change. In addition, the market goal is attainable under operating conditions. The proof is that others are already attaining it. Another basis for establishing quality goals is mandated quality standards. A mandated quality standard is one which is imposed by forces beyond your control. Either you comply or you will be out. If the mandate comes from a client, you must comply or you lose the contract. If the mandate comes from government regulators, you must comply or face possible criminal penalties. If the mandate comes from the boss, you must comply or you may be looking for other employment. The most subtle forms of mandates are self-imposed within the company. Product development may unilaterally publish tolerances which operations is unable to meet at competitive costs. These tolerances are engineered goals, but they are also mandated. They are imposed by a department which has a sort of monopoly with respect to setting tolerances. Such monopolies abound in our companies. Marketing is given a monopoly to sign sales contracts. Purchasing is given a monopoly to sign purchase contracts. Product development is given a monopoly to establish product tolerances. Such internal monopolies can create problems for various internal customers without creating corresponding problems for competitors. To minimize these problems, it helps to look closely at the principal rights involved in internal decision-making. First is the right to participate in the decision-making process. Next is the right to have the last word, to make the final decision. Then there's the right to publish the decision, to sign the paper which makes it official. It is easy to agree that the right of publication should be a monopoly. Multiple sources of publication inevitably result in confusion. Such confusion is avoided by designating one and only one department as the official publisher. A monopoly on publication is logical and practical, but it can easily be allowed to grow into a harmful monopoly which abolishes the right of those impacted to participate in goal setting. For example, product development has a clear monopoly on the publication of product designs. No product design has official status until it is published by that department. However, in many companies, the product development department has over the years acquired a monopoly on the choice of inputs and criteria, and finally, on goal setting itself. These monopolies have been a source of much discord and damage. They have often resulted in designs of product which are uneconomic to produce, difficult to test, unreliable in service, and difficult to maintain. The keys to avoiding such damage are clear definition of the process of setting quality goals and broad participation in that process. A goal is an aimed at target. A quality goal is an aimed at quality target. A quality standard is a mandated model to be followed. Once established, any goal or standard becomes the subject of additional quality planning. There is a checklist of criteria to be met by an effective quality goal. There are various bases for setting quality goals, including history, engineering study, the marketplace, and mandated quality standards. Goals based on history are attainable, but can lead us to perpetuate poor performance. In general, 
goals based on engineering study lead to superior product performance. Market-based goals are essential in a competitive society. Externally mandated standards must be met. Internal mandates result from internal monopolies on goal setting. This can lead to unilateral creation of problems for other functional departments. The remedy for internal monopolies is to promote participation in the goal setting process. To optimize product design, you'll need a methodology. Methods for optimizing goals is the subject of the next session. I'll see you then.